Coco, thanks uh, for having you uh, in, in our show. Well, thank you for having me here. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate uh, it. Uh, um, talking about your career, it's a little bit strange. Uh, a story. It's you real strange. Yes. You, you, start, <laughs> you, you, you started as a drummer, isn't it? Yeah, I started as a drummer back in the you know '60s, and then uh, ended up with uh, playing drums for Albert Collins back in 1972. And, and you had a couple of days of a couple of hours off, and you, you picked up his guitar, I think. No, nothing, nothing <laughs> quite as glorious as that. Um, I just had uh, an acoustic guitar when I was 13 years old. Used that and tried to learn how to play Beatles songs and. You know, cream songs and such, and uh, just a secondary instrument. So I did that, and then uh, going out on the road with Albert, was just listening to him every night, and sometimes jamming with him a little bit, you know, but not very often. But just uh, absorbing him, kind of. And and you will see it on our on our video, but uh, you playing the guitar is left-handed, backwards up, uh, in a strange way. Why is that? Because uh, I'm self-taught. Yeah. I taught myself how to play, so I didn't know there was a left hand or right hand to playing any. And um, being after Albert Collins, you were asked for the blues breaker, John Mayo, that must be something. Yeah, uh, both of those things were quite unexpected, both those events in my life, but they were the, I guess, the real important things that they came my way without even me looking for them, but they did, and I was very, very grateful. One of the guys playing in the blues breakers uh, as well, uh, uh, Walter Trout, mm -hmm. you played together with him. Um, yeah. Um, the blues breakers being a, a, a step, uh, uh, a step forwards in your career uh, for a lot of guys. Absolutely. Is there a way a competition in that way? Being two guitars with such a band. Uh, it, it it started uh, to go that way, which was something we really didn't want to do. Uh, I think. Me and Walter would have much rather have really gotten together and wrote music or played music and worked things out, but uh, pretty much the audience and at that point being the guitars are such a focus of the Blues Breaker band, we ended up uh, going out every night and just trying to to win the people over and uh, sometimes that got to be kind of negative, but mm. uh, we had some wonderful nights though where we were just clicking and uh, me and Walter played not long ago together, we hadn't done it in years. And uh, we were on the same show in upstate New York, and uh, Walter came out on my set, played with me, and it was so rewarding, so much fun, very emotional. Mm. We both actually started crying. I can't imagine. It yeah. was very, very emotional for us, and I love it. Very much. Uh, I think that you have to look at it. Before I go on stage, I have to look at it that I'm very, very grateful to be alive. I'm very grateful to be here playing. I'm going to go play guitar. Mm -hmm. So this may be the last time I get to play guitar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't know. Enjoy so every moment. Enjoy it. Yeah. Enjoy it and enjoy those people. The people are are, are digging what you're doing. That's, that's can't ask for better than that. Coming over here, uh, watching our beautiful countryside, we, we uh, talk to each other. Uh, an artist being on the road for decades of years already, um, being in a lot of countries, do you get to see something of those countries? Uh, probably not as much as some other people do. Um, I pretty much have to, when I'm on the road, unless my wife is with me, mm -hmm. uh, I concentrate per, pretty much on the gig, try mm -hmm. to make sure that I'm rested. and He has a lot of responsibility to show up to be the best that you can be. Um, I've had wonderful, wonderful moments being, you know, in Holland and being in other countries and seeing beautiful things and just wonderful stuff. But when I'm on tour, I'm pretty focused on the music at hand. I got to do that. You're now on tour because you have a new album, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> Brand new one. I want it all back. So do I. Why do you change the, <laughs> uh, from record company? Ah, well, yeah, Thomas Roof. Working with Thomas Roof was the uh, the choice I made because uh, up to this point, since I left John Mayall, I have not really done much to cultivate, you know, the Netherlands or, or you know, uh, uh, or Europe, Europe or anything. Yeah. I haven't really uh, been over here very much. Where Walter Trout, uh, you know, Robert Cray, everybody comes over here. I don't. Mm -hmm. So I've been trying to find the right opportunity to come and 
you know, broaden the market for myself out here. And Thomas Roof was a wise way to go. Uh, I don't think I could have done this kind of album on Alligator Records. Because it's a blue al uh, blues company, isn't it? Yeah, and, uh, you know, and, and it's a very controlling company. So, uh, you know, uh, I, I loved what they did for me. Alligator did a great job. They got a great team. Beautiful people. But Thomas Roof really let me be what I want. This kind of album that I've done, it's not, it's something different, completely different from what I've done before. Yeah. So. That's I'm very happy, yeah. and I'm hoping that will help me break out into the European market. And this is what you always wanted? Sure, yes. Not not only the, the heavy blues stuff, but also... Everything. Yeah. There's, Singing. There's more in it, eh? Well, I'm a musician. Yeah. Uh, I'm a musician. I play music. I have uh, a lot of different musics I've listened to. I, didn't I wasn't born, you know, listening to the blues. I learned it later. Yeah. But before that, I had this doo-wop that I listened to. I grew up listening to that, which I love. I happen to love that music. It's old soul music, old stacks, you know, Volt, old stuff like that. I love it. Have you heard about my baby? Why making a record? Because all the young kids and old people download music. Can you sell some records still? Well, we still sell the CDs on the road, but yeah. I think that's pretty much what they're for. But uh, yeah. hopefully, you know, I don't know what, what the format's going to end up being. You know, yeah. people download and stuff like that. I, it's beyond me. I'm too old to understand what What's all your that's idea about. about it? I don't really have a, an idea. I don't know really what's going to happen, or I don't even know what it's all about. I just know I want to make music. Mm -hmm. That's what I do. That's you know, and hopefully whatever whatever format it gets to somebody and it affects them, that's what I want, you know, just to, to, to affect people and uh, hopefully they'll come to the shows and see live music. Live music is, what's gotta keep it? live music alive. That's what's yeah. all about. Coming back to your uh, your album, I Want It All Back, the mm -hmm. title. Um, when I look to the, ta the, the songs, you choose them themselves? Yourself? Oh, uh, me, uh, me and Kevin and uh, Jeff Paris, we picked the songs. Well, when, when I look to the, the the titles of the songs cry lonely and uh, the life of my broken heart and um, uh, she's gonna need somebody what happened to you no <laughs> just whatever happens to everyone i mean it's 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 definitely you know all of them you know you don't forget there's one called don't go making plans too that, <laughs> that's the one we wrote but uh, and that's about just telling a girl to slow down don't try and get me married off so soon yeah. you know but um, no it's it's just uh I like songs with, with depth and feeling, mm -hmm. you know, whether they be serious or if they're going to be funny, let's make it funny. If it's going to be just a good time, I'm all for a good time. But, but you had a good time, you had some beautiful musicians with you uh, Absolutely make, making this album, isn't it? Oh, very, very excited about the guys. I'm one of my heroes, you know, uh, Steve Ferroni on drums. Mm. I never thought I'd ever track with Steve Ferroni and I'm just, uh, I was just uh, on a cloud. And of course, Reggie McBride on bass. <laughs> Those two that's for right, rhythm yeah, section yeah, is pretty. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty amazing. <laughs> that's something to be yeah. proud about. Yeah. Yeah, I was pretty excited about that. And of course, Jeff Paris, who's a multi-talented, incredible songwriter. He wrote some of the songs. He also co-produced, mm -hmm. and uh, he plays all kinds of instruments, everything. And uh, you know, then you got Kevin. You know, yeah. Kevin's no slouch. And then one of your guests, Rod Piazza. I see your pictures hanging yes. from a big vessel. He, uh, yeah. he, he was there as well. Oh, Rod. Rod and Honey both played on my album, which I'm very grateful. I'm yeah. very grateful. Uh, I, I, I would love to do more with them in the future. I really think that Rod Piazza and Honey Alexander are just the finest, finest touring uh, act I've ever seen. The, the Mighty Fly. <laughs> Thank you. 